Hello, and welcome to the Racers HQ Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Murphy, and joining me on the line tonight is our dedicated co-host, Pat Mulry. How are we doing tonight, America? I am doing uh, well. If I'm if I'm America, I'm doing well. I'm part of America. I am American. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you're the host, I'm the co-host. What we have to make sure is we don't fall asleep while hosting and co-hosting like those pilots on that Indonesian air flight. Did you hear about that? No, tell me more about that, Mr. Mulry. Like, uh, I, I just kind of heard a bit of it on a, uh, on a podcast, uh, the other day, but apparently there was some Indonesian air flight and, um, maybe both of them were air force pilots had been taking the, like the air force no doze, whatever that stuff is. Nice. And, um, like the pilot dozed off, but the co-pilot was like, you know, handling the situation and all that. Right. And it's like, okay, one of them can sleep while the other one's flying, but then the other one dozed off too. And it's like, uh. Oof. Hey, hey guys, uh, somebody's got to fly the plane here. Nice. Apparent, and and I think it resolved itself, you know, like peacefully, no no injuries or anything like that. But I mean, planes happy. basically fly themselves these days, until yeah. they don't. Yeah. Right. They fly themselves however they'd like to fly themselves. Yeah, maybe like that's whole, not the way you want it. Because there's like a whole software layer bef- between the controls and the freaking flappy flap things. It's not yeah, good. Yeah, just like just like the uh, the modern race cars, which we can get into later. It's stupid. Yeah. Awesome. Um, you drinking anything tonight, Mulry? Yeah. Juice tonight is uh, Bardstown Origin Series, uh, bottled in bond, something, something. It's a, it's a sounds, tasty treat, a little bourbon. Sounds lovely. What's your hot take yeah. on the tasting notes? Is it uh, spicy? Is it uh, mm. sweet? I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, it's it's on the sweeter side. It's um, kind of a little... Toasty and caramely, which are pretty okay. much my favorite favorite bourbon tasting notes. Like a warm hug. I yep. like it. Uh, nice. Well, I'm drinking a mocktail yep. tonight. I'm drinking. Uh, I, I think it's just juice and water. I don't like. I don't like full on juice. That's too sugary for me. Yeah. I like to water down my juice. Yeah. So, so. so what's the juice base that's being watered down? Like a like a cranberry blend. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Some off brand. It's not. You know, anyway, it's not cran it's not raspberry. Even, it's not even really cranberries. It's more like cran crab apples, maybe. Yeah, may contain cranberry. <laughs> <You know, so. laughs> we waved a cranberry bog over this. Maybe that's yeah. what you need is cranberries with cranberry bog water. Mm, okay. Yeah. Better than cranberry bong water. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to go with you on that. Um, well, great. Yeah. Now, before this, though, I did find a great deal at a pub. We have a pub down here that we go to every Tuesday night. They have $5 Le Fin du Monde. You know what that thing is? It's like a, it's like a end of the nine, nine point, uh, like Belgium triple. And oh, okay. they, they serve you a big fat one for like five bucks a piece. And like 16 it's ounces a, or something. Um, oh. it's maybe, maybe 10. Eight, yeah. I don't know, but it's good. I mean, it's a big pour. Yeah. That's my story. Um, yeah. Uh, so you went. Makes you a, feel uh, like a Belgian man when you drink it. Sure, I'm, I'm. I'm assuming that's what a Belgian man feels like. He's just drinking triples and eating French like fries with mayonnaise. I love that. By the way, I will, that, tartar sauce, French fries, and tartar sauce. Are you kidding me? Oh, now that's a hot take. I, I'm that's, with you on the French fries and mayonnaise, but tartar sauce, you might lose me. That's the only reason I get fish and chips, man, so I can get that extra tartar sauce for my fries. Anyway, we've gone way off. You know, we're getting into that <laughs> Racers HQ culinary delight uh, sub pod. The fork, That's the right. big fork. We're going to go culinary. <laughs> and this thing goes pro. Yeah. Uh, which, by the way, uh, let, while we're on the topic, we both made corned beef and hash this weekend, and yours didn't go so well because you used. Like the o- O'Reilly's brand. <laughs> yeah. Patty's shenanigan uh, brand uh, leprechaun corned beef. Yeah, no, we uh, we did not do the do-it-yourself corned beef using Kenji's recipe, which is a go-to mm. killer recipe, um, which I know about because my friend Matt Murphy recommended mm. it a couple of years ago. Five stars. But... Um, but uh, uh, subscribe to the Matt Murphy uh, corned beef podcast, but um, 
yeah, we uh, I didn't get on it early enough because you know it's got a, what it has to corn for like a week or something like that in the brine, right? So yeah, um, didn't get on it early enough this year, so I had to go with the store bought, and it was um, cooked properly, but um, it was just too salty and not flavorful enough. So yeah, good texture, not great flavor. I woke up. What was it? So St. Patrick's Day was Saturday, was Sunday. Woke up Monday morning and my mouth was just like a salt lick. You know how you wake mm-hmm. up and you're like so dried out. And it wasn't even from like overindulging other than maybe overindulging in corned beef. Yeah. I did do the Kenji recipe and it did turn out beautifully this year. So um, yeah. I, I can't, I can't put it any other way. I, I, you know, I can't be humble about this one. It, it I nailed it. Uh, I've got <clears throat> the pro tip on this is to do the, like a uh, repeating calendar item for like March 7th every year to brine your corned beef. Outlook has a function. Yep. That's how you win that game. So, so. while we're here on the, in the subreddit um, or the, the sub, whatever it is, <laughs> sub pod, uh, what cut of beef do you use for your corned beef? Typically? I got, I got a full like 10 pound brisket for this and I cut it in okay. two and did two vacuum packs and um then use and then pro tip or this is something i think i missed one year when you're done with that initial brine you take it out of the vacuum seal you rinse the whole thing put it back in the vacuum seal then sous vide it um, ah you so you sous vide it okay after after rinsing the briny solution off yeah because i think one year i sous vide it in the brine and it was bonkers Salt-like. you know i mean yep. yeah it was salt not beef yeah but um, this year, I think the flavor really came out. Um, all the other herbs and stuff you put in there. So, secret herbs and spices. Though. Yeah, yeah. Well, that is the nature of corned beef, right? I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, deal with it. I mean, at some point, right? Moving on, Pat Mulry, you uh, you did something other than cook. You went. You took the uh, enduro car out to the racetrack to see if it still worked. I did, and it did. Fortunately, um, so we uh, we took. Our E36, uh, now known as Re- Red Miku, because it'll red be Miku. a red, probably primarily a red car, and mm-hmm. um, took it out to ECR on Sunday, um, which was, I think, the only open member day, uh, weekend member day at ECR this month. And um, I'm, I was, we're very fortunate we went on Sunday because on Saturday, it was kind of uh, intermittently raining cats and dogs. Um, what is it when it's not cats and dogs? Mice and kittens? I don't know. Sure. Anyway, uh, uh, <laughs> um, and uh, so took it out on on Sunday. It was uh, the weather was pretty good. It at least wasn't raining. Kind of overcast mm-hmm. and chilly, and and uh, and then it warmed up as the day went on. It didn't get real hot, but. Um, <clears throat> Car, you know, fired right up, got it on track, was using a really old set of Cooper tires. You remember when we were at Sebring and we ran to the tire store that day to get them Mm -hmm. mounted? Um, It was that set that I had bought when you couldn't get hand cooks during COVID. And we Mm -hmm. needed another set of tires for Sebring just in case. So I've been using those intermittently, like for track days. And not that I do that many, but when I take it up there to test, I'll throw those on there. So I'm not using any hand cook, uh, rubber. And, uh, I think the last, the last outing for those, um, cause I think the, you know, the build date on them is like January 21 or something like that. They're pretty old mm-hmm. and, and hard at this point. Um, but, um, and it turns out, um, I had them, I had forgotten those hand cooks are so, uh, pressure sensitive, so much more than the hand cooks even. And, they really want to be low starting off. And I had them like at 30, which is, you know, pretty much right in the wheelhouse for start on, on the hand cooks. And those Coopers really like it about 25 to 26 cold. Um, so I did the first, yeah, yeah, the first two or three sessions and I I was texting you guys. I'm like, man, this car is so loose. Like it's loose front and back. Mm -hmm. Um, which, you know, wasn't, I wasn't out there to do a suspension critique really. Um, it was to, yeah, this is the first time it had been on track since the rebuild. And, um, I mean, other than just running up and down the street, just to get it out and get it hot. And I mean, really to try and make it fail, 
um, just run it hard enough to get it to do something that it might do on track, you know, at, you know, for this case, Hallett, um, before we get there. So, um, and surprisingly it, we didn't really find much. I mean, nothing significant. Um, there's some, you know, some little electrical issues, the, um, the water temp sensor sender, um, for the gauge was flaky. So it was kind of bouncing around from like, you know, 110 to 140, 120 to 180. Like it never got above 180 and it just wasn't hot enough and wasn't being run hard enough that I was ever worried about it overheating and it didn't ever, you know, spit water out of the, the overflow like we have it set so that it'll do if it is getting near, um, overheating temperatures. Um, you know, the, yeah. I mean, the electrics all, it all, it just, it really ran great other than it was loose. And, and then I took, we had, we took about three pounds out, um, before the last session. Um, and I went out and it was definitely less, uh, it was stickier in yeah. that last session, except, um, I ran it out of gas and yeah. I didn't realize it. Um, because you know, what we've always been told was I've never ran that car out of gas um, we're running a hydromat in it, and um, as we have been for years on in in the prior version too. And you know what I'd always heard and always been told was, hey, that hydromat's great, except it goes from you know 100 percent to zero percent with like no warning, right? And I'd never experienced that firsthand, but that's what we'd always heard. Yeah, and ask, uh, ask Nathan Adler about that. Yeah, exactly. And um, so. Uh, I was out on track and, and really the car had been, I mean, the car had been running great it, all the way around. Um, it sounded good. It felt good. The idle actually had fallen back to normal. It had been just high idling and it had fallen back. So it may be that we've got the, um, the factory, I think it uses the factory water temp sensor, um, as the, um, you know, like until the water's warm enough, it'll hold the. Yeah, right. idle high or something like that. Um, or it might be the, uh, intake air sensor, something like that. Um, but you know, I mean a high idle, you don't really, you, it's not that much of a concern on a race car, right? Cause you're not, you know, sitting in a stoplight you're never really at idle for very long. Um, I think that's the case. If I'm wrong, I'd love to, you know, get a comment to, uh, whatever our socials are. Um, to see if that's a, a poor assumption on my part, but, um, yeah, I got out there and then I go through like turn two, three, and then get out of turn three and it's just running rough, like out of the blue rough. And I'm like, Whoa, where's this come from? You know? And so, um, it, but it was still running fine. The numbers were all good. Um, the coolant numbers were actually good at that point. It had stopped bouncing around after we'd fiddled around with the connection. Um, the oil pressure number was good. Oil temp pressure, oil temp number was good. So I'm like, I don't think the engines hurt, but it, but something happened. Mm. And, um, so limped it around the track, brought it in. Um, it died rolling into the paddock and I'm like, Oh man, did we like, this is feeling kind of like Spickard's motor. Like, did we hurt a piston somehow? Do we have, do we have you know, a hole in, the block or the head, like what is going on? Right. Get it back to the trailer and, um, you know, try and start it up again. It won't start up again. Um, and it's like, okay, well let's, you know, let's trailer it up and get it home. Cause we're not going to do anything to it. You know, sitting mm -hmm. here in the paddock. Um, and, um, got it home, did a compression test on it. Um, could, you know, see if we had a, a hole in anything. Yeah. Um, compression test was, really good um uh, for you know what's a pretty used motor um but good the numbers were all consistent you know within 10 psi cylinder to cylinder so there wasn't you know something leaking real bad did a smoke test on it um as an aside to anyone out there uh who does bmws that doesn't have a smoke generator and this is probably true for other cars but but bmws have a real pain in the butt um intake manifold that smoke generator is worth its absolute high value. I don't know how much they are on Amazon, 50 or 60 or 70 bucks. Um, we had tried to, in fact, we had done a DIY one ourselves once upon a time. It was not reliable. 
Um, we bought that one. So, you know, it hooks up to shop air and, uh, and actually the battery or 12 volt from the car and you put some mineral oil in it and it, you know, outputs mineral oil smoke at a very low, mm. um, rate. So you're mm. getting that, you know, we just actually, we, we, um, put a nitrile glove on it and, and like zip tie that around the intake just to get the smoke into the intakes. And it makes it great to find vacuum leaks. Um, right. And, um, we found a small vacuum leak at two of the fuel injectors and realized that somehow the fuel rail had not gotten bolted all the way down. Mm. It was like 90% down, but not all the way down. So it's like, Oh, well that's interesting. Um, but there wasn't any, I mean, no fuel went anywhere. It wasn't supposed to go, but you know, right. I suppose you're, yeah, like you're getting, bad. Oh yeah, absolutely. Cause you know, we've got, that's a, it's sort of, that is like Spickard's car. We've got, um, unmetered air getting into the engine at that point. So mm-hmm. lock that down. And, um, like we're like running through the traps. We're like, you know, everything seems okay. And I was like, you know, but we hadn't gotten the fuel level sender working properly. Um, like we knew it wasn't working properly Uh and we'd filled up the car, you know, a few weeks ago and it had only been driven, you know, up and down meandering way a couple of times around the street a couple of times. But then we went out and did, you know, more than two hours on track. And, um, let's see, I did about 40, 30, 30, 30. Yeah. I mean, we were over two hours on track for that fourth session and, um, you know, did two laps and then that happened. So I was like, well, let me just run up to the gas station and, you know, get five gallons. I'll put it in the car and see what happens. Put five gallons in the car, starts right up, runs like a charm. So, nice. you know, pro <laughs> tip. Pro tip. Put gas in your car. <laughs> put gas in your car when you want to test it at the track. But yeah, you know, but, but that was something interesting to learn too. Like was, um, you know, this, this car. And so we were actually, we were logging, um, some of the logging stuff wasn't working. So that's something we found that we've got to get, um, working properly. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's where, you know, running the logs and telemetry wasn't working properly, but we know that ECR is not the place to test that because the cellular, um, network out there is so antiquated. Um, it's hard to get cell signal anywhere. But we were logging data, and one of the things that we found was that when that car, so, you know, what's normal fuel pressure on that? 46 PSI or whatever it is, you know, kind of your normal uh, fuel-injected PSI at the fuel rail. Mm -hmm. Um, But you can see in the fuel logs, like, there's, like, a pretty direct correlation to getting under 38 PSI, and, like, you've got a lap left. If if it gets down to 38, you've got a lap. And so, um, no, it's great to know because that's one of the things like we can set up if we've got the telemetry working, that's one of the things you can set up as a warning, you know, when it hits 38, like it needs to kick off a big visual signal so you can get on the horn to the driver and be like pit now, like we're not ready to put gas in there, but we'd be better off like at Hallett, for example, we'd be better off having the car come in and sit in the pits while we scramble the jets to get down there to do a pit stop than we would to die out on track and then wait to get towed in and all of that. Right. Yep. Um, so, I mean, you know, and, and then, like I said, we learned, I mean, you know, I've got a, a two page, well, maybe page and a half list of, you know, of things to do, like get the fuel center working and make sure that the fuel cart is, you know, that we drag the stuff out to the pit stops like that. That's, the tires are working on it, for example, because that has a tendency to fail and um, get the water send water temp sender working and stuff like that. So we've got a we've got a list of things that need to be done, but nothing insurmountable. Um, so it was a it was a very good test day. Um, on the fuel cart, real quick, I I want to yeah. tell you I, the last time I went to Hallett with Roland, I don't think I brought this up. I was looking at that situation the fuel cart situation right because yeah we had this when we went to the enduro there um we were trying to just bomb right down that hill and it was this big muddy you know hill right and, you know what's it's probably not it's probably more like a 30 or huh. something but it's brutal um to get to our pits and there is a need to do it you just you know you, you know you take the 
the run over the rise, yeah. you know? Um, and so you can yeah. go like down, down a slope and then back over a slope and you know, it's just going to be a lot more doable. So we don't really need to have like some off-road beast of a fuel cart, you know, as long as we just give ourselves enough time. Yeah. And I anyway. think it was after Hallett last year, wasn't it? That Eric did the revisions, of the fuel cart and like widened the track on it or something. So it's a little bit more stable. I think, I yeah. think that was after Hallett last year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll have the, the, the beefed up kitted out fuel cart. That's right. Maybe, yeah. maybe with a new glittery paint job, maybe we'll paint it to match the car instead of just being whatever it is right now. Ooh, black. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I I, inter I interrupted you. Um, what else was on your list there of uh, things to? Oh, I mean, you know, it's it's like some you know get the get the logging stuff figured out. Make sure it's yeah. you know do another telemetry test in the in the driveway. Um, get like the the paddock set up. Make sure that that's all set. I mean, it it's you know kind of all very manageable. Last minute, not even last minute stuff. We got what five weeks until the race. Um, whereas you know like when I'm in the truck driving back to, to Dallas from the track, I'm like, okay, well, um, if we windowed the block, um, I've got another engine just needs to be assembled. You know, we can, right. we can swap an engine in five weeks. It's just going to be a got little bit of a, a little bit of a tear, but you know, we've done this before. Um, so, yeah. you know, I'm like super glad that that's, that that's not the case. So, um, yeah, that's car, racing. It was super exciting. And, you know, Rachel, when I got home, or actually when I was on the phone with her on the way home, she's like, oh, are you really you know, upset? Are you really disappointed? I'm like, no, you know, every, <laughs> if you, if you take the car to the track and test it and you don't learn something, that's when the test was a waste, right? Like you you should be learning something at every test session, whether it's, Hey, look, we did an okay job. This is a good way to manage um, the rebuild process. We were thorough. Like, you know, we definitely, as we were going through um, building, rebuilding this car and moving stuff, you know, from here to there, like one of the things I did this time differently from last time was if something was going on the car and, and frankly, this is because of, you know, all the time that we've done this now, right. If something was going on the car, it was going on all the way. It wasn't going to be, we'll bolt it on, but not torque it. Um, mm. you know, we'll just hand tighten these bolts until we're ready to come and do the whole, you know, um, rear subframe or something like that. It was like, no, like we're going to do each piece all the way every time, apparently, except for the fuel rail. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and it's going to get, it's going to go on, it's going to get torqued and then we're going to mark it with the, with the, um, the torque paint, um, mm -hmm. so that we can see that it's been done. So that we don't have to go back and and try and remember, you know, oh, did I, you know, do this on the rear subframe? Did I, did we torque those bolts? Did we do whatever? It was just we're going to do it. And and if that means that you know, come come along to do something else, you have to undo something that you did all the way, and it takes fifteen or thirty more minutes. That's a better compromise than you know, not doing it, forgetting to go and torque all the bolts on the rear subframe and then have, you know, the rear subframe work loose during a race and be like, Oh, you know, uh, you know, smack your head. Like I wish I had a V eight kind of thing. Right. Um, so I, I think yeah. that that change in perspective and, and operation management kind of as, as I was going through and doing all that, I think maybe that had some benefit. I don't know. I was very surprised, um, that we didn't have, more issues at the track. I th I thought it, we would go out and to be like, oh look, the alternator belts, you know, coming off again, or you know, fuel's not flowing properly, or I mean, you know how it is with a with a race car. It could be any of a thousand things, and you never know what it's going to be until until it isn't. So, um, yeah, no, I think that's a really good tip is to just yeah get the job done. Um, yeah. So yeah. Um, no, it's great. And, and, you know, and the results show, right. And it would, it doesn't take hardly any more time to take that apart. I mean, if you're hitting it with the right wrench, yeah, just get the job done the first time. I like it. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. And that was like, as, as I, I don't even remember what it was. I was, 
doing when something was going on in the car, you know, probably the front mm-hmm. subframe or something. I was like, you know, I mean, it was just, it was that, it wasn't like a big strategic decision. It was like, look, we're just not going to screw around with this. Like if it's going on, it's going on. And if I have to take it back off, I have to take it back off. Cause some of those things do, I mean, that does happen with some of them, you know, like, well, do I really need to tighten down? Um, there's a good example, you know, like on the front suspension, do I really need to tighten down, um, <clears throat> the, this, all the steering stuff because I'm going to have to come back and realign this anyway. I was like, no, we're going to just, you know, tighten it all down as it goes on and then we'll loosen it up. We'll line the car and then we'll tighten it back up. And like you said, it's like, you know, another 30 seconds, but, um, it's, it's just weird. Those 30 seconds can be hours or weekends if it, if it doesn't come right, you know, now hopefully, you know, knock on wood, um, that doesn't come back to, to buy us at Hallett because I forgot to do something. It probably will. No, well, but... we appreciate all of your work <laughs> on the car, Mr. Mulry. Well, thank um, you. Yeah. Well, very good. Well, I'm glad that worked out. And who did you have helping you? Uh, was it? Uh, we, had had uh, we had a great group. Yeah. Yeah. We had a great group. So um, Ben uh, was able to make it and Todd Wyant came with Ben and then uh, Todd Spickard met us up there a little bit later. And so we had four of us up there. Um, nice. You know, and it it was helpful, you know, as we were getting the car back on the trailer to have more people to push around in the paddock a little bit. But um, it was it was good to see everyone that was there and, and hang out a little bit. Man, you know, so when was the last time I was at ECR? Um, it was probably almost a year ago, right? Like, I feel like we did some testing before Hallett, maybe. Um, yeah. I think so, right? Um, they keep pouring money into that place. Um, That's wild. They're, it like more buildings. There's a gore. I, I took pictures and I forgot to send to you guys. Um, there's a, so, you know, that kind of gravel area that we usually load and unload in and, and work out of, um, up, you know, by the main building, but not, not mm. the grid area. Right. They've put in a, um, you know, a public restroom there. And it's the nicest restroom I've ever seen at a racetrack anywhere. Mm. Like marble floors. Mm-hmm. It was insane. Just insane. Like what, what is this? It's this like a, this is like a golf club, like a nice golf club locker room. Not yeah. like what you ever see at a racetrack, even like at Barber, you know, where the facilities are fantastic. Um, yeah, there's a building that they've built. I don't think it's done yet, but it looks like it's like, um, condominiums, like there's a garage and then like maybe two stories of li- of living space above that. That's just to the east of those garages up at the, up right by where we were. I think there's another building up toward the top of the hill. Now another, yeah. a whole nother set of garages. They've, um, down in the the bottom that used to be kind of those rows of uh, asphalt that you could then park in the grass, they've paved that entire thing and turned two-thirds of a skid pad with sprinklers in the pavement. Like, you can't park nice. on it anymore. Um, yeah. Because it's a, it's a full-bore skid pad. It's, um, That's you know, awesome. it's incredible. Like, going back, like, when you think back to what that place was like in you know, 2010, 2012, um, it's almost unrecognizable as being the same place. Um, it's really, really impressive. So, and it's a fun track too. I mean, I still, man, now, like I've said on this podcast before, like when I go out there for those test and tunes, this is, those are not like Pat go turn fast lap kind of days. Like that is 100% be in the, be, have my head in the car. Like what's working, what's not working. What do we need to fix? What do we need to look out for? Right. And if, and the lap times are just what the lap times are like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I still do not have that. What, what do they call it now? The Italian Canyon or whatever, the right hand turn into the left hand turn, the S's the back onto the long back stretch. I, I still yeah. don't have that. Right. I don't know. I've, I mean, not that I've done that much, but I've probably done 
four or five dozen laps there at this point. And I don't feel like I've got it even like if we went up racing there, it wouldn't be like any home field advantage at all. Gotcha. Hmm. But I don't well, think we're going to be we racing on anytime that. soon. Yeah, we can. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Well, good, man. Well, I'm glad that worked out for you, man. I am. Um... I am getting ramped up for the season. I am really excited. I'm really yeah. excited for Hallett. Um, and uh, the little Miata is coming along as well. I That's remember awesome. that scene. Remember that scene in like um, Fast and the Furious where he's got like the the Ford Lightning and he's coming home from like the import shop and the whole thing's like like you know like falling over with boxes of like car parts and stuff. So it's like right now in my garage. It's like. Uh, Got a, I got a new harness. I got like a brand new harness. I had like a fresh date on it. So that thing's good till like the 2030s. Okay. And, um, Which harness got, did uh, you go with? It was like a Sparco Endurance harness. Okay. Um, yep. But uh, I'm, I'm, us- I'm using that shop that NASA has now. They've got the, uh, so the NASA has the, what is it? Um, OG Racing Shop. Mm-hmm. And so they've got a select, you know, nice selection of things. It kind of like pairs it down. But I feel like I'm, I'm going in the right direction, right? Um, especially if this is like the sanctioning body of the place I need to go racing. So right. I also got a, a fire system. Um, nice. Uh, so um, yeah, excited about that. Um, got. I started which, to get that which installed. Fire system did you use? Yeah. Which I, I, I knew you were going to ask that. I got to freaking look it up. Um, <laughs> stand by. But uh, it's blue. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know, something 2020. Stupid. But uh, but yeah, so you got that AF coming out, yeah, 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 all the um, yeah, yeah, uh, let's see here, NASA OG Racing, that's what it was, anyway. Um, and then uh, got my discount code, and I'm gonna go with um. I'm going to go with these Maxxis tires, man. So uh, oh, yeah? you may not know much about this because it might not really matter to you. But um, so that's the big thing is basically there's two tires to run. Three tires, I guess, really. There's Hoosiers, uh, Toyos, or Maxxis um, in this Super Touring 5 or 4 uh, yeah. league. And um, yeah, I'm not going to find that right now. But anyway, um, so yeah, there's a couple different tires to run. A lot of people run the Toyos. Um, I'm gonna try these Maxxis. Uh, they're kind of on par with Toyos. They might ru- they might be a little bit harder, but might get a little bit more life out of them. Um, and you get a discount code and you know some sort of contingency, right? And so um, ordered a set of those today. Bought some more material, so I cut off the front like four inch splitter on my car. We're gonna go yeah. no splitter, and so I bought some uh, no, ABS for- to cover that up. That's for points, points yeah, basis. For points. Yeah. yeah, I can run more power. Uh, so mm-hmm. something like 192 at 2,400 pounds yeah. is kind of the target. Um, yeah, uh, so I got a little, lot of work to do, but uh, things are coming along. Um, I'm going to go racing. Yeah, probably first first NASA race at Hallett this year, and then hopefully uh, a couple more down in Texas. Yeah, are you, uh, you going to try and make that the first um, April comma race, or is that not going to happen? I don't think it's going to happen, but yeah. um, we'll see. Yeah. I, I, I think what I'm going to try to do is like a VIP day, like later, maybe mm. mid April. And then I'd be, you know, freshly uh, practice for uh, the Hallet race. Yeah. That's a good idea. So that's kind of a target, I think. We'll see. Yeah. But um, yep. Just need to get out there and work on it. This weekend, instead of doing that, I installed a subwoofer in my. Uh, in my SUV, which was a total waste of a day, and I regret it now. <laughs> Except so. when you're when you're thumping down the street. Yeah, but honestly, dude, my car already had a subwoofer, and I just wanted it to be a better subwoofer. And honestly, the juice was not worth the squeeze. No, so. really, that's too bad. I know. Yeah. Oh well, live and learn. So that happened. Um, but yeah, really excited. Uh, cars coming along. Um, I'm gonna have to change out the springs, but I can do that pretty quickly, actually. Uh, but we'll have to run a harder spring with that, um, with those slick tires. So oh. that, that's how that works. Um, soft springs for the 200 tread wear, harder springs, like something like 900 pounds up front. That's something crazy. Is that um, because there's less sidewall flex on the slick tires? Yeah. Um, something like that. It's well, it's so, so you're going to be generating more G forces. And so you can't. Oh, that's true. 
So you want to stop yourself. Like in general, you want to run a soft spring, but mm -hmm. if you're generating a whole lot of that um, kind of lateral grip with the tires instead, you know, you can kind of reduce that, I guess, is it mechanical grip? Anyway, point is, is you can run a little bit stiffer and then that way you don't bottom out, right? So it's like you can really push the car to the limit um, of its suspension travel, I think, um, on the stickier tire. That makes sense. But, but yeah, but if you're not trying, if you're not hitting that limit, you want to run a softer spring. And there's yeah. some other thing I don't really understand, but it's about the way you're, it's like depending on the tire, um, like grip level, there's like an oscillation of your suspension that you can measure. Yeah. And like, you know, um, the further it goes down one scale, like, you know, the stickier tire you'd be running. But right. basically I just ask the guys that make my shocks and I tell them what I've got and they tell me what to run. And <laughs> that's the way you to do it. Con consider a similar solution. You know, I mean, I don't, I'm not a scientist. Um, so yeah. Uh, but apparently that's what, uh, that's what Porsche does. If you buy one of their, uh, like, you know, cup cars or a Cayman GT four or something like that, they just like, Oh, well here's the book of suspension settings for every track in the world. Oh, nice. Yeah. Now they don't do that. So if you buy it. a customer nine, six, three, like Penske doesn't come to, uh, you know, JDC Miller and say, Oh, by the way, here's uh here's how to run the fastest nine, six, three, but oh, for, sure. for the more pedestrian stuff, pedestrians. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but uh, like you can say that about any of the ra Porsche Porsche race cars, right? But but speaking about Porsche race cars, uh, the twelve hours of Sebring's happened. Yes, exciting that was, race. That was an exciting race. Yeah, I I mean, twelve hours of Sebring is like a basketball game. Like I just want to see the end of it. It's going to be really good. <laughs> like the way they do it now with the cautions and everything, and they get everybody back. I mean. I guess they don't put them back on the lead lap or or anything, but they bunch them together. They do bunch them together. I don't know. I I um I was not able to see the end of the race because I was driving up to Decatur on Saturday evening to make make it easier to get to the track super early to catch that first session at eight a.m. But um, so I missed the end of the race, but I watched probably the first the better part of the first eight hours of it. Um, there was some just you know spectacular racing going on and and i was like man you know and i i think i texted you guys i'm like i would love to go back to sebring with miku and race it there again if somebody else would do the tow like that's the toughest part about that whole thing is getting there and back when you're We'd there like to ship fun. it gosh with yeah, our luck ship, we'd it. ship it and it would it would get you know like the box car would get hijacked and you know, wind up in the Gulf of Oman or something, and we'd never so see our have, car again. So you have insurance. Well, I guess so. Let's just insure maybe, the snot maybe, out of it. Maybe that car's uninsurable. Be like, no, no. We we know what happens on these trips. We're not... <laughs> we're not... Your your premium is the entire cost of... Uh, uh, the entire cost of your, of your car would be like, you know, trying to get a, a bond after losing a case to the New York Attorney General. Boom. Well, I did see the end of the Sebring race, and let me tell you something. Uh, so I think it was GTD Pro? Anyway, uh, sports cars, right? And right. Um, there's this rowdy Lexus uh, guy, and they were doing yeah. a restart. I think it's Hawk, Hawkorn or Hawkthorn. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, man, and, you know, he, he was behind the Ferrari, and he just went for it, and, like, we're talking went for it. Like just, we're just going to rub bumpers until I'm in front kind of thing. Full send. Yeah. And, uh, and it worked. And then, uh, that created a lot of, uh, turmoil behind him as well. Uh, and there was a lot of things moving back and forth, but he held on for the win. This is like watching like the last 45 minutes of it. Yeah. And then, uh, you had a pretty similar battle in, uh, the prototypes, um, that number 40, Acura, which I was a fan of because I think uh, Button drove for them. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, like that was a, a cool car to watch. Um, and they did something pretty similar. They they hunted down the the leader and um, yeah, gave him a little argy bargy. So uh, those things have fenders and uh, 
and they used them and uh it's just pretty cool to see i don't know that stuff's exciting and that's I, kind of what happened uh, last year too except it didn't work out right like they got a little argy bargy in the porsche and the and the acura both got to not finish yeah. the race and cadillac yeah. won or something yeah i think that sounds familiar yeah yeah so good but go team acura my wife's got an acura i visited an acura dealership today did jensen, you jensen button other reasons because Jensen Button was there at the Acura dealer in Oklahoma City? No, that that didn't happen at all. No. Oh, okay. No. They that used to have really an NS. They did. They used to have an NSX. No, I'm just saying I love Jensen, Jensen Button. And, uh, yeah. And uh, you could get him to sign your Braun GP hat. Yeah, that'd be that'd be the best. That would anyway. be the best, wouldn't it? So yeah. why were you at the Acura dealer getting something done on Alyssa's car? Yeah, B1 service. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's called uh, oil change, but yeah. No, it's oil change, and they checked the cabin air filter. Sure, yeah, they checked it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I got a, uh, I got a, uh, you know, car wash out of it too, right? Mm-hmm. So, sure was worth you know. it. But the best thing is that B one light isn't on the dash anymore, and that's the thing that counts. So that's good right. For them. I told Alyssa there's probably like a there's gonna be like a C one code that comes up here soon, and it's gonna be like a two thousand dollar service. I'm like, you wait. You have to check the valve timing or something, you know, like yeah, that hits gonna, you. Like, yeah, the, the valve, uh, the valve or the timing belt needs to be changed. Mm-hmm. Probably, no, it's probably an engine out service. She's got that eight speed DCT that's also got a torque converter on it. Like that thing can't be cheap to work on. So <laughs> I don't know. We're just selling the car, honey. Yeah. All right. Oh, I love my car. Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, anyway, good race. Good race. Any other races? Was, I guess we've got the uh, F1 race coming up soon. Australia. Yeah, that's right. That I think that's this weekend coming up, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think it's going to be a traditional race weekend, like a Sunday race. I think race. you're right. Yeah, that'll be nice. That's right. Sunday race, normal qualifying, not sprint qualifying. Or is it sprint qualifying? I haven't looked at my calendar yet. Mm-hmm. I guess I could look right now, couldn't I? Yeah. Let's all just pause. I'll try to figure out which fire system I bought. You know, it'll be great. It'll be great. That that is good radio right there. That's what that is. Or good podcast. Is uh, it, is it just radio? Searching searching your email. Uh-huh. No, no. It it is it is a normal race weekend this weekend. Three free practices, normal qualifying at you know, of course, midnight our time, uh, on Friday, I guess, and then, uh, or what? Yeah. Yeah, that's got to be around Friday night, and then the uh, or Saturday night, and then the Grand Prix. No, that'd be it. Anyway, Grand Prix at eleven o'clock p.m. Saturday night. You know, U.S. Central Time. Yeah, probably whatever it is, two o'clock or three o'clock or one o'clock Australia time. Thanks does time fl- does fly- time flow backwards in Australia like the sinks? That's exactly how it works, Mister Mulry. I appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah. If that's that's a, a preview of our uh, Racers HQ Space Time podcast, mm-hmm. yeah, sub pod, it's on right yeah. after Racers HQ I, Optometry Daily. I did do some deep dive on on quantum uh, mechanics for a while there, but really, uh, yeah. Um, anyway, you can watch like courses from Stanford and stuff on YouTube for free. Um, it blew my mind mostly, but you try to figure it out anyway. Um, okay, update beep 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 beep. I bought the Lifeline Zero 2020 Fire Marshal FIA fire system. It is awesome. a cute little blue bottle. Um, it's it seems more compact. Something about how it acts like a five liter or five pound, but it's really a three pound or something. I don't know something like that. Oh, okay. But um, it's ABF, which is a water based system. Huh. Um, and it's got two pull handles on it. Anything um, but fire? Is that what it stands for? Anything but fire, yeah. yeah. It just puts yeah. out um, cat invasions, um, leprosy. Uh, <laughs> Kaiju outbreak? All, all of your common risks. Like, if you're looking at top ten risks, it takes care of it, except for fire. So... <laughs> <laughs> but it got the it's got the right sticker. That's all that matters. It's got the right sticker. Cat. No, it's got a yeah. Yeah, that bottle's good for like ten years and uh and the contents for two. So I'm excited. 
Oh, so. here's a hot tip for you on uh, mm -hmm. bad pun, but a hot tip for you on uh, fire bottles is uh, put a little bit of packing tape, just clear packing tape over the uh, certification label on that sucker. Oh, nice idea. Yeah. Because a lot of times those are you know, just written in on Sharpie. And then mm -hmm. if it gets, uh, if it catches like some spray brake cleaner, suddenly you've got a decertified uh, fire bottle. Mm. Good idea. These are punched in, but okay, fair. I mean, but I guess okay. it's good, you know, wipe away the markings and stuff. So yeah, no, good idea. Yeah. Smart. You use a lot of clear packing tape throughout the race car. This is something uh, that's like a pretty consistent pro tip for you. So. Yeah, I guess that's true. Not so much on this car, although I'm sure we'll end up putting some on the um, uh, the marker lights on the the corners of the front mm -hmm. the front of the car. For whatever reason, those just seem to bust off so easily. I don't know why. Like you look know. at them cross eyed, and one of them falls off. Oh, the BMW E36 corners. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I think I've told this joke before, but remember, I tried to add them to my Amazon subscribe and save and. <laughs> and it was it wasn't eligible, but I, I took the I took the screenshot of the like <laughs> this product is not eligible. I mean, I mean if 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 I got a new pair every six months, we we wouldn't you know we'd we still would probably never need to get it. A, no, we'd still probably need to get a pair every once in a while. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah there's going to be epoxy in there. Yeah, that's true. Maybe that's what I should do is epoxy it to the. Mm -hmm. um, because it like slides onto the side of the the head mm -hmm. uh, the headlight mount. Mm -hmm. Maybe that is what we should do. Uh, lemons used to require, but I don't think it does anymore. I should know. Um, used to require like back in the day, you had to tape over like all the headlights and taillights and stuff, so that when somebody hit you, there wouldn't be you know sharp plastic all over the racetrack, you know, mm -hmm. puncturing other tires. But I think we got rid of that a few years ago. Hmm. Um, I'm still, I still yeah, I think I've still got, you know, I think at some point I graduated like using, uh, what do they call it stuff? Laminex or something like that. Right. Um, instead of, instead of packing tape from other set stuff. Cause you know, I'm, I'm fancy like that. Yeah. You are pretty fancy. It's a safety feature. Don't worry about it, Jay. Yeah. That's right. It's all, it's all safety feature really. Yeah. Well, very cool. Well, yeah, lots of racing coming up. Uh, looks like we might have a an A hod for for those that don't know. That's an all hands on deck. We're gonna we're gonna converge on the E thirty six and make sure all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed and maybe apply some graphics. And then yes, go racing. Apply the final graphics. That'll be the the most exciting part of the whole weekend. Frankly, is getting the Miku stripes and Miku on the car. It's exciting. It is. Well, very good. I'm glad we're maintaining that fan base. Uh, go Miku. Um, <laughs> very good. Why, right, well, why I, do you guys have this on the car? Uh, we don't really know. I mean, we know, but we don't really know. Yeah. Drunken eBay. That's all you need to know. Well, I want to give a big shout out to our listeners for making it this far. Um, thanks for hanging out with us. I think we've done a podcast. Mallory, uh, do, you, do you have anything else you'd like to chat about tonight or any shout outs? Uh, no, uh, no new shout outs other than I uh, hope things are going well for Nate in the field and, um, yeah. get some good reporting back here, uh, one of these years. And, uh, thanks to Todd, Todd and Ben for coming up to ECR and hanging out and, and doing the things with the race car and, and hoping to, you know, get it ready and get, get to Hallett and have a fun time doing racy things again. Yeah. That's exciting. We've got a big crew. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of help out there at Hallett, and uh, and yeah, go uh, go try to win some races. It's exciting. Yeah, um, yeah. Big big thanks to everybody. Yeah, that was able to show up to that test day. I was not able to, but I do have to make the the A hod for sure. Um, yeah, big shout out to Tarp Racing for continuing to to do well. Uh, shout out to RacersHQ.com. Um, Shout out to NASA Racing for giving us uh, Hot Boys a place to race. And, uh, <laughs> and yeah, um, like and subscribe, rate and review, and uh, we will see you at the track. Bye, everybody. Good night, Dave. <laughs> <laughs>